Hi everybody, welcome to my channel for a new battle report, not a practice game. Uh, this time with actual miniatures, which was a, a pleasure. I'm not playing that often training games on tables because I don't have so many opponents or gaming friends living nearby, so it's not so easy for me to organize. Uh, but this time I had the occasion to play against Lichmeister, who is not living far away from me. So it was another practice game against his vampire. And it was good for me because since the last update where vampires got this new yeah, list style with a triple movement spell, uh, I didn't have the occasion to play against, so I was really eager to, to try out. My list is the same as the previous battle. I posed the wrong one here, but it's the same with the double discipline banner, basically. And this was my opponent's list. He's playing Vampire Count on a zombie dragon, who is the general. Uh, he has a master vocation with an early tome, which is two movement spell, and the third one is going to be on the courtier BSB witchcraft, who is also Nosfera too, so he has three healing uh, possibilities, two banshees, two big block of skellies, two direwolves, two zombies, two bat swarms, and then two unit of wraith. I like the fact that they are not champion, meaning he's not losing spell when he loses them. They are not so expensive, so I find that quite interesting. And it's 15 rate total, so quite quite good. Split a bit better the points than when, when you play 10 of them with a champion. Then the Shrieking Aura and two units of spawn that are autonomous and can be alone a threat. And just an annoying unit, basically, that is flying. So as you can see, most of his combat threats are flying or have the, the Reaper or the... How can I say? Yeah, the Reaper rule, meaning they they just don't care about other units, they can go through and so on. Uh, we were playing Sacred Target and Marching Column for this game. Since I have quite an advantage in close combat because of the size of my units and the number of health points that I have, I felt I'm going to go full uh, combat uh, blast. So, uh, not combat buff, but uh, blast. So, magic missile, basically. I took Swarm of Insect, Double Fireball and... Pyro flow and I'm left with three combat buff, hereditary, one from Shamanist, so Awakened Beast and Rod of Battle and I also have Chilling Gold, that could be interesting. In his setup, yeah, he picked uh, as expected, he has a double movement spell, triple movement spell, three heal and then a minus one resilience and uh, reroll to wound and it has also the creation of a new unit. Matchup analysis, so yeah, it's like an MSU type of VC, but with two block in core. A board control should be mine because uh, skeleton blocks are not so uh, an issue for me to deal with since I have a high number of attack. My magic missiles should be excellent in this matchup, especially since my caster are large. Uh, it's just harder for the race to really hide behind unit. Uh, he has some units that are large or bigger, but it could restrict a little bit his movement and also the fact that I can't really minimize my magic missile because I have three magic missiles that go 36 inch or 48 so I can really go really really far away. Stormcaller reduces a bit the poison uh, shooting effect threat. So I know that if he gets any cover then I'm hitting on 7 plus from long range. Anticipate covering uh, magical moves with other units. I know that he can go up to 24. So I just need to make sure it cannot go over me and go behind me or something like that or go in a zone where I cannot punish the, the placement after that. Secondary, put the target close if possible. Um, it should be to my advantage. My list like to play close from each other, the unit supporting each other. So if I can put them close, that's um, easier for me to win secondary and I felt the matchup is in my favor. Deployment, so my opponent won the roll for side, which uh, was positive news, I guess. He gave me impossible. Uh, which is not what I like the most, but at the same time, I was able to put the two token really close. He put his on flank, which is um, sensitive or what I expected, and I put mine in the middle, like so, as close as possible from his, basically. And then I drop for first turn. I put the combat merc vets on the left uh, that are not painted yet. Then I had the Trison unit, the Bruiser Star with three characters, the two mages in Great Can. Then we have the BSB with the shooting merc vets, the dogs, other Trison unit and my two monsters on the right. So I started from the left with marching column and he did, which I think was the right solution, to start from the right. I expected him to be a bit more maybe to the right to give himself more option. Uh, but basically he did, like, he did like spawn, raised and dogs a bit more here to the right. I think was kind of right, should have been a bit closer to the board edge to give himself more option to deploy compact or to go like he did a bit wider. I think both options are, are decent here. 
And yeah, I just put the two flexible monsters here around the impassable to try to threaten the middle line and so on. So I'm quite split over the board with my threats. He counter deploy the following zombies in the back. This one with the character BSB and the mage. Uh, level 4, then you have spawn here uh, facing backwards with wraith behind them, spawn facing backward and the same wraith move just right, yeah they are here at the end. Then he has uh, wolves, wolves, shrieking, zombie dragon behind, the bats, uh, skellies with the two benches and skellies here. And that's his deployment. My turn 1, push hard forward. So um, I felt I kept I will keep th these guys for, for later, for the secondary or fight the zombies, so I just push here 12, uh, push the death star. But as you will see, I angle it a bit too much. Uh, the rest just push slightly forward. Put also my monsters in position, but I didn't want to... Uh, yeah, I wanted to, to cover the position for the race where they could move and so on. And since those guys were facing backward, I, it just allowed me to push 14 forward with the giant. In magic phase, I got firewall, um, fireball on the wolves. Kill one of them. Then I got 2d6 strength 4, so pyroflow on the dogs as well, kill 5, so 2 left. And then another fireball on one dice was able to kill them. Uh, before that he dispelled Swarm of Insect on the Shrieking Ore. And with shooting I was able on 7 plus to put only one wound on the Shrieking. Obviously the BSB always hitting on 4 plus, but the rest of the unit 7 plus. So not much, but I got rid of one piece, chaff of, uh, piece of chaff, which is always nice. He's turn 1. Uh, he saw an opportunity on the left and uh, that's where I did a mistake. I didn't really see that coming so he chaffed uh, me with dogs, he was exactly able to do it. I could have prevented that or placed myself better, thinking especially about the Death Star placement which is not covering these positions here on the left. Not great for me. Uh, move the Shrieking within 8 to scream, move the race here to go over me and then go back and push a bit the zombies. The rest just rearrange, he rearranges his line a little bit. Um, and that was it, magic phase. He got uh, Dance Macabre, I think, on them, which killed two of my Merc Vets. So with like seven or eight, eight, I think, Reaper, he was able to kill two raw Merc Vets. Then he got an Hereditary to heal the Shrieking with two dice against three, which was annoying. And then the Shrieking went against my Merc Vets and killed a third one, so already lost. Uh, almost half of the unit after this first turn, which I didn't really expect. Uh, let's move on to my turn. Charge the chaff. So I knew after this time that it's going to be a hard time for the Mergret, but I want to take some points with me. So I charge the chaff, turn around the Death Star and just tell him, if you engage something, I will see you with the Death Star. That's the idea. Uh, reform those guys because I'm expecting to maybe face some combat so I want to have as many attack as possible and Then I push with the frosty and push the giant just basically telling him you committed on the left So if you want to move the race forward, you cannot go with 12 over me So you would need a magical move and you cannot use magical move on the left magical move on the right uh, so I wanted to make the choice harder for him and I'm getting closer and closer from the skellies. Uh, I frenzy baited him to charge the giant. Didn't care too much uh, about that charge because he's going to do some wounds on me. I'm going to be steadfast. I'm going to be striking back with more attack and just be able to counter charge if I need to. Uh, the spawner would be in trouble here if they fail that one. And yeah, that's more or less it. In magic phase, he banished all swarm of insect, got fireball, did three wounds on the those spawn no the spawn here on the left. I had a line of sight. So kill three of them. And then with shooting against the shrieking without cover this time, but without target one, I guess. I did two wounds. Which is not bad. Close combat got rid of the dogs and just uh, pivot. He put the race this time in front of me to chaff me. So it's not too bad for me because I got like 180 from the dogs, 300 from them most likely next round. Which is already almost their price. So I felt if I'm able then to, to get something more it wouldn't be too bad. And then zombies uh, against them and with the support of the Death Star should be fine. So I felt it's not perfect, but at the same time, uh, still have enough wound to get rid of the wraith. And then you need to commit something else, which I can maybe kill with the Death Star. So we will see. Uh, the rest of those guys facing forward. So you see all these uh, flank threats looking at me. Those guys pass the frenzy and move here to look at the flank, just telling me if you charge here, I can counter charge you. He prepared the wraith as well, a bit sideways, but far away from my giant. And that's it. In a magic phase, he got uh, um, 
And also, yeah, he failed that march. I don't know if it matters. Maybe he would have moved a bit more, but he failed that march. Uh, with the sweeping on my unit here, he did four wounds with four sweep. So it's another another guy that died. Then he healed his freaking gore and did another couple of wounds here. At which point I needed to take a panic check and I failed the nine rollable with the three remaining guys and fled off the board. So that was it for the Mergret. They punished me for being unpainted <laughs> and for my mistake on one. So yeah, um, a bit unlucky because I would have liked to kill the chaff with them. Um, but uh, that could happen. Um, yeah, I just exposed them too much to his range damage. And I should have been, uh, been taken, being a bit more carefully on the left. So I lost those guys. Now I need to react. Uh, let's move on. So I charge with those guys I was lucky enough to get a 9 on the charge in the flank so at least that's that to recover a bit this left flank I got here 7 swift right with the frosty against the skellies which I was also happy to get and position the giant in the counter charge option so those guys are in my front uh, it's not possible for them to charge me those guys can charge me in the flank they will be wounding on 6 up uh, those guys can charge me in the flank but I'm going to shoot them first and he's just out of the field and this guy is also placed a counter charge and I would be striking before those guys with the frosty. Meaning between a shooting phase and striking before they are likely to die. Or at least not much will be attacking the frosty. So I felt it's a, it's a good position from the frosty. Here I have an overrun on 7 and I just push a bit forward the Death Star looking on the left. Just telling him if you charge then into something I want to see you and counter charge you. The dogs move a bit forward. And uh, yeah, that's it in the magic phase. I got a fireball, kill three of the race here on the right, which is a nice. Uh, what else? Turn three room. And another one killed on a more, two more, so only two left. And then I also got pyro flow on the bats with three dice against three, so lucky me. Uh, and I kill six wounds of the bats but he's still alive with the bats and with my shooting I managed to do five wounds to the spawn so definitely strong range uh, damage here uh, close combat I did some wounds here I, I went through the wraith just too many attacks but I failed the overrun just one inch so I did just a six instead of seven uh, which is a bit unfortunate and here you have the stat of the Frosty. I was curious to see that against 11 attack from Skellies. He still managed to do two wounds from this first round, which is low likelihood. Uh, I was a bit, uh, yeah, tense after the... I felt phew, it's, it's, I'm getting nervous if I lost one third of the wounds of the Frosty in the first round of combat. That can last a bit more. So <laughs> it's not that likely that he does two wounds. Uh, here he charged with the spawn. So I also, last round... What I did was to frenzy bait the spawn against them, which I like. I uh, just needed them to pass the overrun and then he couldn't see me. Only the Shrieking could see me and charge here. And if those guys fail the frenzy and have to charge here, it's interesting. They could charge the dog, at which point I could flee, uh, but they would still get exposed. So I felt... I don't know if he had the range to charge, but most likely yes. But I, I like the fact that I was able to, to frenzy bait him. In this case, didn't matter because uh, he can see me since I failed the overrun, so he charged with the spawn. And what surprised me a bit and was definitely a mistake is he charged with the zombies as well, just to bring some some ranks. Move the shrieking here to the side to scream at those guys, which is not so annoying. He passed the frenzy here, looks at me and chaff me with the two or three three remaining spawns. Uh, uh, wraith, sorry, and the rest just uh, reform was zoning me a bit with the dragon and so on. In the magic phase, he got. Uh, he got, he got, also, yeah, he failed another time, I think, here, the march check, but didn't matter that much. He was able to heal two times those skellies and put 11 of them back, I guess, and he did four wounds on the bruisers with the shrieking. In close combat, uh, the spawn fluffed a bit, uh, just a bit below the average, as you can see, which is five, five to six, yeah, five, and he did only three wounds, which meant I had two tribesmen left. And with 8 attack plus 2 stomps, I managed to tie combat against the zombies, which is huge because now my Death Star can see his spawn. And uh, that's a big issue for him because now I can get a good charge and get rid of all of that in the left flank. So my turn 4. Um, I charge here on the left. Uh, sorry, you're a bit sp spoiled because of the chart. Charge here with the giant. And as you can see, I managed to do 0 wounds with the giant against the 3 remaining wraith. 
which was very annoying. Uh, I think I did like seven wounds, but he managed to pass all three up ward save. Um, so yeah, not so likely, but he did. Here we're still stuck in combat. Here I charge the chaffing bats. Turn around with the poison shooting to try to get rid of the shrieking, which is still annoying. And I decided to push with the dogs, basically the idea being I'm threatening the bunker, threatening skellies in the flank. If he doesn't do anything about the dogs, they could be uh, very annoying for him because they have a high amount of attack and that could be too dangerous for a mage bunker. In my magic phase, I got plus one resilience here. Just in case you want to attempt shrieking plus zombie dragon combine. Yeah, I wanted to, to be a bit careful here. So I got plus one resilience. Um, also, since I'm far away from the BSB, you never know. I don't want to take any break check here. Uh, shooting, I d and that's that's what I did from because I had no magic missile basically. Also, that was one of the reasons why I buffed myself is since I couldn't cast any magic missile because I'm in combat. Um, shooting, I did only one wound on the shrieking or which was a bit disappointing. And then close combat, yeah, here zero. He did one wound to me, so it's a tie, which is uh, annoying. I reformed this way. He charged me in the front and gets against my parry. Uh, here did some wounds, he crumbled a bit, but nothing crazy. Uh, here I just crumbled the bats and here I, everything. I just one shot the spawn and then those guys crumble due to combat result. Uh, so no zombies anymore and I could just here turn around. Let's see. His turn 4, he was able to push the skellies in front of them to just uh, take advantage of my positioning and I cannot easily get into combat here, so that's well done for him. I could have anticipated a bit better, not really, because I wanted to get rid of the chaff and shooting, so I couldn't do anything else. Uses one of the banshee to chaff those guys to prevent them going into the bunker. Uh, replay, uh, pr yeah, just remove the dragon to a, a better spot here to covering and get counter charge if you need to. And just move the shrieking to to try to get rid of those guys. In the magic phase, um, what he got? He got a magical move on them to place them better to make this charge really impossible. Then we all to wound fail, and then yeah, the giant rolled crazy this time. So he had like six attack of spawn on a four up battle focus, and then four up, and I think he did like two wounds then me going back with like none attack kill the spawn and then i stomp against those guys kill one more and at the end it ended up uh, those guys are dead crumbling by one and he had just one sp uh, race alive still important uh it's uh, but uh yeah quite huge this combat this combat finally ended up being a bit better i roll a good amount of wound this time he crumbled a bit more so i'm going to get rid of them next round and uh, that's it for combat. My turn. And also with the Banshee, kill two dogs. My turn five. Uh, move this guy away. Turn around. Try to get rid of the Shrieking with four wounds remaining. Those guys looking at the zombie dragon. Here I charge the, the, the Banshee. Here I'm chaffing those guys. Here still in combat. Here still in combat. In the magic phase. Uh, I use... I did, I think, nothing in magic phase. Uh, I think I got just hereditary on them. But it just dispelled the rest. I used the breast weapon, did three wounds to the shrieking, uh, meaning it was still alive on one wound. But still lucky, I rolled like double six on the hit and then a couple of sixes. And uh, unfortunately, the crossbow didn't manage to do the last wound, which would have been a bit too much. And then what happened in the close combat? Got rid of the raised, got rid of those guys. And here, um, it's like a tie combat. I did pretty much nothing. And then in his turn, uh, the Shrieking on last wound, charge the back of the dog on the 9 Swift Stride, get the charge. 3 DT, he rolled 1-1, one, one, but he passes the 6 up regen, so he's still alive on one wound, which is not what I wanted. Uh, those guys move a bit sideways, he just put the dragon facing my Frosty with 2 wounds remaining, trying to kill him with a breast weapon. And those guys starting to move forward towards the secondary. So basically, secondary-wise, I should be getting this one. Um, but then, as you can see, I'm not looking the right way to still be a big threat. So I don't know if it was worth it to turn around, try to get rid of the Shrieking. I don't know about that. But that's what I did. Uh, this one should be mine and uh, the middle one might be contested. But I have two scoring, he has two. So I need to find a way to block those guys. In the magic phase, I got... Uh, no, he got... Excuse me. 
Hi, binding scroll the heal this time didn't want uh, anything to heal too much i think last yeah i forgot to mention i did three wounds of the dragon with my poison shooting which was very ex exciting i felt so this time he got uh, one time heal on the dragon so heal two wounds he has only one wound uh, lost breast weapon did one wound so i'm still alive lucky me here he just killed dog and that was it. Uh, my turn 6, I had the amazingly stupid idea to charge out with the BSB against the dragon. You will see why in a moment. Uh, move out with the general to give leadership everywhere. Manage to reform in a column and go facing them. I have 9 attack on 2+, plus, 2+, plus, plus a stomp on the 2+, plus as well, to compensate his static res. So I should be fine. I had no way to move the frost in between to chaff him. And uh, yeah, Frosty just moved sideways to throw some hunting spear. Those guys move back. And that was it. In a magic phase, I got 2d6 rank 4 on a banshee, did 2 wounds, the rest he dispelled. I uh, managed to do plus 1 res on those guys to just make this combat safer. Here I killed the Shrieking, but now my BSB is exposed. And on his last round, he put the 2 banshees, killed the BSB, which forces panic check here on a 9, and here on a 9 as well. Obviously, if I fail this one, uh, that's pretty much the end for me. So uh, not the end, but that's huge. So phew, should have just paid more attention here. It was a stupid move. Could have just instead put the BSB with the Great Can together, shooting at the Shrieking uh, and do some magic to kill him. So I'm yeah, a bit disappointed by my move here. I took the point from the BSB. Luckily, I passed the 2-9 check, but I could have just uh, played it way better and way safer. And here he charged me, but I managed to do enough wounds to, to stick at least or to win combat even. And that's it. And it ended up being a 15 to 5, so I'm up on points. Kill plenty of small stuff uh, and big stuff with the Shrieking Aura. He took my BSB, which is worth way too many points that I gave away. Uh, half the, fr the Frosty, the full Mugvest that fled off the board, some tripe men and the Tigers. Post-game analysis, so yeah, I'm happy to get two tokens close from each other. Deployment was not perfect, I think I should have switched the Shooty, Mergvets and the Death Star, the Bruiser Star. Uh, VC turn 1, he found an opening that I didn't really see coming and I'm a bit disappointed about myself. That's the first disappointment, the second one was just what you saw, the fact that I, um, I go out with the BSB and took some crazy panic check towards the end. Which was definitely something avoidable. Turn 2 Vampire, the Halberd Merc going to die no matter what. So I fled off the board, which isn't likely on 9 rollable. But at the same time, um, I was going to die. So yeah, I should have just played better this left flank. Turn 3 Vampire sent zombies in combat with the spawn. Was, I think, his main mistake, which backfired because this basically gave me the secondary. Frosty ended up dealing with Scully, so was in tension. As you saw, I suffered four, four wounds in like four rounds of combat, which is a bit more than what I expected. But uh, still ended up dealing with the Scullies, which was nice. And uh, I already talked about the bad decision on turn 6. So that was it. Uh, really happy to get this training. I think the matchup was in my favor due to the range damage mostly and also the combat superiority. I could have played it better uh, in order to win higher, but I think overall it's good to, to train this matchup and get to know better about the, the movement that he can make with this race and magical move. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope it was interesting for you and talk to you soon on the channel. Bye.